Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World review. Today we take a look at the Dino Escape Fast Force Tanistrophius. Finally the nightmare ends. I've been trying to track down this stupid figure for months on end. No luck. A lot of collectors are having problems trying to find this figure. I don't know what it is with a Styracosaur in the wave, just that wave instantly becomes impossible to find. Uh, I've been to Best Buy and Target more times than I would like to admit. So at the very beginning of February, I pre-ordered the entire case from Entertainment Earth as a backup plan. The other day, it finally shipped, which means I can stop running the stores for the time being until you know Dominion Fig is released. So got home today, had a whole fresh case of these Fierce Force waiting for me. It comes with one Tandy Strophius, two Styracosaurs, one Monolophosaurus, and two Mashiachosaurus. Uh, I have most of these figures. I actually needed the Mashiachosaurus, so I was okay getting the wave. Um, since I have extra figures, stay tuned to the end of the video, and I will be uh, giving away this Styracosaurus. So tune in to the end, and I'll explain how you can enter. So yeah, this figure absolute pain in the butt. Uh, I think it would have been more fun sticking five of those Styracosaur figures up my butt. That would have been much more enjoyable than the aggravation uh, I put into tracking this stupid thing down. I'll leave a link to Entertainment Earth uh, for that whole case assortment. I think it's temporary out of stock. It says on their website that they are expecting more. So, you know, if you're trying to track this figure down, that might be a way to actually get it. And then, you know, if you don't want the rest of the figures, uh, just sell them online and try to get some of your money back. So that link will be down below in the description. Also heard Best Buy is a good place to find this. I've actually hit up my Best Buy, like I said, multiple times. Uh, never found it, but I did see a Styracosaurus and Monolophosaurus on the shelves, which means I missed the figure. But, you know, for those used to look in, Best Buy is also another option. So let's go over the package really quick before we crack this cracked out figure uh, open. Comes in the Dinoscape Fierce Force packaging. Got the Jurassic World logo up there. Blue. Got a picture of the smashed paddock fences in the background. You got a picture that this figure has articulation on the neck. Spin it around. You get a nice picture of how the Fierce Force action works on this tanny. Here are the figures in the wave, which I already showed you. So hey, enough about the packaging. Let's get this thing up on the turntable and take a closer look. And now let's start with a nice 360 degree view of this goofy looking figure. Now Tanistrophius is a mid to late Triassic reptile. It is not a dinosaur. It was possibly semi-aquatic. And this is not the first appearance of the species in the Jurassic franchise. Uh, way back in the 90s, I think this was part of series two of the Kenner Jurassic Park line. That figure had a uh, bendy uh, tail and neck and then it got later repainted in the chaos effect line as a uh, tanaconda even though it you know really wasn't a uh, hybrid so it's nice to see the species make another appearance even though it's an absolute nightmare to track down um you know if you've been watching my reviews on dinoscape it's it's uh, been a lot of peaks and valleys with this line some figures are great some are okay but the paint apps are all over the place and seriously the paint apps on this figure i think are absolutely awful they're very uninspired you know just the front part of the figure is painted and it's just like a not a coherent looking color scheme on there the mattel can do better i just don't know what's up with them and you know i thought they'd be doing better with dominion some of the toys for dominion do look great but it looks like we're getting more of the same old you know you know spotty paint apps uninspired uh color schemes and stuff but yeah, uh, I am happy to have this figure. I like getting every new species in the Jurassic World line, no matter how much I uh, can't stand the figure itself. So yes, I am happy I have this figure, even though it looks like it's absolutely cracked out of its mind. And now for a couple quick measurements. This figure, if you measure along the curve of the neck, is about nine and a quarter inches long. Tanny's Trophius in real life was around 20 feet. So I put this figure somewhere in the 126 scale range. Now the neck alone on this figure is five inches long. The body is four and a half inches. Tanny Strophius in real life, the neck was actually longer than the body. So in that respect, uh, Mattel actually got that part of the figure correct. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure, starting with that goofy looking noggin. Uh, this is definitely one of the more cartoony looking species Mattel has done. Like I said a couple times, peaks and valleys with them. There's some great figures and there's some bad figures in. 
Oh, this thing, only a mother can love that face. Uh, look at the eyes. This thing looks more strung out than me at a Vegas uh, bachelor party. Uh, let's talk about those teeth. They look like giant ice cream cones uh, hang out of the mouth. The teeth should be a lot smaller. This thing probably parade on fish. And it just looks absolutely ridiculous looking with those giant oversized teeth. Uh, inside the mouth, it is painted in pink you can see the tongue is painted and the roof of the mouth back of the throat and the gums are painted the head's so small my camera does not like to focus in on it here's a view of it from the top and we already looked at it from the front <laughs> and then going down the neck uh it gets a little bit thinner before it gets a little bit thicker that's to accommodate uh the joint right here and when we get down to about the halfway point you get some spikes that start to come out that end at the base of the neck most of the neck is mostly done in white. You do have a little bit of blue paint right here, and then it transitions in, into a semi-coherent uh, pattern on the neck and around the shoulder area. I will say the sculpting and detail on this figure is actually pretty nice. One thing I will give Mattel credit for, their sculpts are getting more and more detailed. Uh, paint apps, meh, not so much, but the, the way the body is and the hands are sculpted, it kind of reminds me of like a Komodo dragon's body and it has some really nice details I need some nice folds and wrinkles a lot of nice fine scale detail you have some larger scales above the shoulder blade going down to the front arms you can see the toe claws aren't painted there's barely any paint on this figure turn it over on the other side you can see some nice finely sculpted scales on the bottom here is the scan code for those who want to scan this figure into the fax app same thing with the hind feet toe claws are not painted in but like I said, lots of nice scale detail all over this figure. You have a very, very tiny tail with some nice folds at the base and some more of that really, really fine scale detail. Do have a little bit some wide hips, some junk in the trunk on this figure. So now that we went over the details, let's go over articulation. Now, as far as articulation is concerned, this figure actually has a decent amount of it. It's probably the most articulated uh, Fast 4 Savage Strike figure ever made. We already went over the mouth, but the mouth can open that far and close. And you do have a joint right here. There is a hinge joint. It lets the neck look down and look up a little bit. And you do get some nice rotation. Now, one thing about these joints, they're really tight and they're small. And if you're forcing this thing around, you will break it. That's another thing I can see driving up the value of this figure is the neck joints breaking and you know trying to find a complete one in the future. Going down to the midpoint of the neck, you do have a, another joint. Now... This one was a little harder to get working. That's because this part is cast in white plastic and this is painted right here. And they actually put paint on the joint. So I had to heat up a little bit with a hair dryer. But now that I did that, you do get some nice motion with that. And you can do 360 degrees with that joint. Like I said, they're really tight. Play around. Soft them up a little bit and just work them really slowly. Cut. I can really see these two joints snapping very, very easily. Go down to the front arms. They can move forwards and backwards. They are on a hinge. If you want to swing them out for whatever reason, this one's a little bit harder because the elbow is bent. Going down to the hind legs, you can move them backwards and forwards. And there's a little locking point in there to keep them in neutral position. No articulation at the tail because that is tied to its fierce force action. Now to activate its Fierce Force action feature, all you want to do is hold one of the arms down on this figure and then push on the tail and that will cause the neck to swing down. And it looks like this thing is about to have a hell of a time in Vegas. Moving on with comparisons, here it is with a figure I'm sure everyone has at least 20 of in their collection. Here it is with Owen. And next up here it is with the Wild Pack Baby Brachiosaurus, which is proof that Mattel can do proportionate painted teeth. Let's take a quick zoom in on this uh, Baby Brachiosaurus. These type of teeth would have looked great on this figure, but instead we're getting stuck with this stupid ice cream cone look. And next up here it is with the Soundstrike Kentrosaurus. And let's do another Soundstrike. Here it is with their... Oranosaurus. And then next up is the Mega Destroyer Pentaceratops. And here it is with the Danger Pack Scorpius Rex. And lastly, here it is with some of Mattel's other non dinosaur species. A majority of these are very expensive and rare, and they were all a nightmare 
to try and track down, but uh, let's try to find the common theme. There was a Styracosaurus in this wave, there was a Styracosaurus in this wave, and there was a Styracosaurus in the Tanny wave. So I guess that thing is just absolutely cursed. Even the Postosuchus was kind of hard to find, uh, hard to find, but at least that got to see like it being released in two waves. Uh, the Stringosaurus, uh, I know a lot of people are still looking for that one. I've actually seen that one a few times. It was actually at Best Buy, so that's another place if you're still looking uh, for this weird looking creature. So yeah, uh, I, I don't know what it is. Mattel really seems to hate uh, prehistoric reptiles. It's every way that any of these species show up in. They're just an absolute pain in the butt for collectors to get their hands on. But at least we're getting a new, uh, I think we're getting like two or three Dimetrodons with uh, Dominion, but it's not the same mold as the old Dino Rivals one. And I'm sure the Scutosaurus in some form will make another appearance. And I'm sure Postosuchus will. You know, Mattel's repaint happy, but man, they don't like repainting these figures for some reason. So good luck to anyone that's still trying to track these down. So final thoughts on the Tanny Strophius. Uh, if you couldn't tell during this review, I am not a big fan of this figure. I just feel like it was poorly executed. The head sculpt is absolutely goofy and weird looking. Those giant oversized teeth, those cracked out eyes, a very cartoony looking figure. Um, but you know, in the end, you guys really don't care what I have to say. It's a new species to Jurassic World. Everyone wants it. It's an absolute nightmare to try to track down because for some reason, Mattel hates us and that's why they throw Styracosaurus in waves to just drive us absolutely crazy. So hopefully uh, some of you will have an easier time trying to track down this figure. I'll leave that link to Entertainment Earth down below in the description. Hopefully get more of the those full cases in and keep hitting those best buys. I see a lot of people online saying they have a lot of good luck uh, finding it there. It's always tough when we get to the end of a line. You know, this is the last wave in Dino Rivals and we're, you know, a couple weeks away from Dominion Toys rolling out. So stuff near the end uh, always becomes very hard to find. So I wish you all luck trying to track this goofy, ridiculous looking figure down. So now for those of you that hung around to see how you could win your Fierce Force Styracosaurus figure, here it is right here. All you need to do is comment down below using the hashtag Tanny in Las Vegas. Uh, this contest will run to March 29th. I'll select a winner at 7 p.m. Eastern time, only one entry per person. If you use the hashtag more than once, you will be automatically disqualified. Unfortunately, it's only open to US residents because shipping is absolutely crazy right now with the prices of gas and everything. So I'm only gonna limit it to those of you in the US. I'll leave a more detailed description of the rules down below in the description. So that will do it for the review. As always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.